Welcome to this edition of Art Bites. I'm super excited. As you see, I have my food curator and chef, Jennifer Armstrong Hicks, and we're getting ready for the holidays. Um, I know you may be trying to figure out how to go about planning your holidays, but we're going to make it a little easier because uh, Chef Jennifer has a cool little something you can do at home that's quick, um, that's handy, and it makes you look like an expert in the kitchen. So um, I don't want to belabor the point or I don't want to like talk your heads off. I want to just get to the cooking. So with that, First and foremost, welcome, Jennifer. How are you? Hey, I'm great. It Good. is uh, nice to be getting close to the holidays and smelling all the like awesome smells in the kitchen now. So um, I've had a lot of gingerbread smells and now all these like cheesy, buttery smells. So um, yeah, it's, it's, this is a good sensory time of year. I love it. You look great, by the way. I'm like, the, the, the uh, Carolina light is agreeing with you so well, so well. Mm, thank you. <laughs> But, but uh, your your attire with the pineapples that's also very Christmas. I, I, I was trying to be festive. I was trying to like align with the festive uh I guess thought process of the holidays and I like I drinking it. pineapples year round. So even though yeah. it's winter time. <laughs> and you match my tree. I've got a little a oh. tree in the background. I I actually have a pineapple on that tree. So yeah, I think we're I think we're in tune. I think we're in tune <laughs> as well. But uh, I do want to get to uh, what we're going to be getting into tonight. So I'm just going to throw up really quickly so you all see that image. That image there is a sample of what we'll be, uh, or I should say what uh, Chef Jennifer is going to be cooking up uh, to this evening. And then you all uh, could definitely follow along because those instructions will be located on our website. And um, before we jump into the actual uh, meal or the actual food prep, uh, let's highlight the artwork that inspired this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the artwork and the artwork is there. So Jennifer, if you can sort of just break down, um, first and foremost, the art piece itself, uh, the artist, and what inspired you about this piece? Yeah, I love this piece. Um, it's called Mutable Objects and it's by um, an artist named Adolf Gottlieb. Um, he uh, worked in abstraction and lots of great um, expressionism. Um, he was born around, uh, I think he was born in 1903 and lived until the mid 70s. So um, he's, he was around to see a lot of interesting art movements. Mm -hmm. um, but I love this piece in particular. Uh, it's part of the pictograph series that he did um, that was really cool. It was a series where he was trying to kind of create this universal language in art with um, symbols and symbolism. Um, so I like that, uh, I like that component of this work. Yeah. So I love this series in particular as it relates to what we're doing today because um, we're making these pinwheels or spirals and there are these great spirals in the work. Um, you see them in the eyes, um, in the individual eye uh, and some other little spaces um, in the work. So um, yeah, he's a great artist and um, some really interesting work. Um, and so many different types of work. He did a lot in this particular series, mm -hmm. but later in life, um, actually after he'd had a stroke and only half of his, uh, one side of his body was um, not really working very well, he still created another whole series um, that's amazing called the Burst Series. And um, lots of abstract kind of uh, fields of color with these bright red areas and a lot of black and white. And I actually made a cake years ago that was inspired by one of the works in that series too. So it's really fun to kind of circle back um, with uh, Mr. Gottlieb. Nice. So are you ready to make some pinwheels? I'm ready. Let's get into this. This is one of my favorites. I normally cheat and buy these at the grocery store because <laughs> I don't know how to make them. So now I feel extra special because I'm going to have a skill set uh, for a dish that I typically use during the holidays. So right. I'm ready. Let's jump Good. into it. Well, what I'm going to use um, is some puff pastry that um, I actually purchased, but you could make your own puff pastry if you had time. Um, it is a laminated dough, which means it has lots of layers um, of butter and dough that create that puffing. Like instead of having something like baking soda or baking powder as your leavener, the thing that puffs it up, it's actually these layers that are laminated of butter. And that um, that kind of uh, evaporation of the air really like lifts the layers, so that's why it's puff pastry. That's why it's puffy. Um, but I am using classic uh, Pepperidge Farm. It comes two sheets in a pack, and you have to thaw it a little bit in advance. 
So that's what I've done. And so um, this has been thawed. It, it comes kind of folded like this. So you have to just thaw it for a while and then unfold it. You don't want to do it while it's frozen. Otherwise, it'll crack. Um, you can kind of see a couple of lines in it, but it's not cracked. It's still together. Um, and I like to just roll mine out just a little bit more just to make sure it's completely even. And I'm going to rotate it so that the long side, if you have a long side, it might be squarish. Uh, so that the long side is facing me. Um, and I brush off any excess flour if there is any. I put just a tiny bit down underneath just so it wouldn't stick to my surface. But I like to um, keep it nice and free of any excess flour. And the first thing that we're going to add to this is pesto. And you can buy pesto, uh, obviously, at the store. Um, Places like Trader Joe's, um, pretty much anywhere now will have pesto, but um, we make our own. So I'm using some of our homemade pesto. I also included the recipe for pesto in the, um, in the recipe for the pinwheels mm -hmm. in case you do want to make your own. Um, we grow our own basil, and in my pesto, I actually use um, almonds instead of pine nuts. And I love to use Asiago uh, mm -hmm. instead of Parmesan for the cheese. I think it just gives it a little bit betterier flavor. So um, that's what we do. And what we're going to do is spread a few tablespoons of this across the surface of the puff pastry, leaving about an inch along the bottom. So we're going to go all the way to the edges because we're going to eat those ends. So you don't want to skimp too much on the edges. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's always somebody that wants the like not pretty pieces or we call them like with biscuits or with this, we call them the funny biscuit or the funny, the funny piece. So somebody always wants the funny piece. I will have to say that I am he. I am the one that will eat all of the uh, pastry, no matter how crazy it may look. Right. Like yeah, I, I'm the one that's in the kitchen, like peeling the like burnt cheese off of the pan afterwards. <laughs> that's always me. So here's the um, here's the kind of empty inch or so along the bottom that we want to keep, mm -hmm. and then we just sprinkle a whole bunch of cheese on there. Mm -hmm. And this is um, I'm using Parmesan for this, but any hard cheese that is grated, Asiago, uh, Romano, things like that all work. Um, so anything that you have in that realm will function properly. And as an optional ingredient on the recipe, I have uh, prosciutto. Yeah. And so I'm going to add that in this batch. Um, the first batch I did without it, but we do love prosciutto in our house. So if you do eat meat, you might like this. And it comes packaged um, pre-cut in very, very thin sheets. That's what you're shooting for, for prosciutto. And so I'm going to put a few pieces down here. And that looks like enough. And then we get to rolling. So I'm going to clear this area just a little bit. Get all those little extra bits away. And then you start at the end that's furthest from you. And you just kind of fold over just a little bit. I always it over and kind of push it down just a little bit to sort of secure that center. That's what's going to be the center of the pinwheel. Okay. So I like to secure that little edge and then you just start folding it over onto itself. And if you're careful, you kind of want to go back and forth um, so that it stays nice and tight. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're careful, you just kind of keep kind of pull it out a little and roll it back towards yourself. It's, it's a, um, it seems counterintuitive, but it sort of stretches the dough and it keeps it, um, it keeps it nice and taut. And the reason why you want to make sure it's taut is, um, so that the pinwheels are, you know, tight. Yeah. Um, so we're getting close. I like to keep a pastry brush on hand. Um, if you do have flour that was on your surface underneath, mm -hmm. it's nice not to roll that into it if you can help it. So I usually keep a brush on hand and kind of clean it off as I go. Okay. And then we're getting close to the end here. If anything is sticking out over that little edge, just kind of tuck it back in. And then I take just a little bit of water mm -hmm. and uh, you can do it with a brush or with your hand. Just put a tiny bit of water along the edge and that helps seal that edge just a little bit. Okay. 
one time. And then you have your log. Yeah. And once that is kind of good to go, we are going to pull a cutting board over and slice it. Um, something that you can do um, if the dough is a little soft, if you're concerned about slicing it when it's soft, you can pop it right back in the refrigerator, the whole log, for about 20 minutes, and then go from there, um, take it back out, and it'll be a lot firmer. And so it'll be easier to slice. Here comes the spinning board. I'm going to transfer that. There we go. And then when you're cutting, obviously you start on one end. And I would say cut about a half an inch or so, quarter to a half an inch uh, pieces. And I use a serrated knife, um, one with the, you know, kind of teeth. Mm -hmm. And um, I just carefully saw back and forth so that you get a nice clean cut. And if you do use, um, if you decide to use prosciutto, by the way, did you notice the alliteration in this? <laughs> uh, pastry, prosciutto, pesto, parmesan pinwheels. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I'm just saying. Um, but if you do use prosciutto, the serrated knife is even more important because um, it has a little bit more resistance than something else might well, without it. So now that they're all sliced, we need a pan. Put them on. And when you transfer them to a pan, it's good. I'm using a silpat mat, which is like a silicone uh, nonstick mat. But okay. if you don't have that, parchment paper is fine. Um, I, you can get that at you know the grocery store or Walmart or somewhere like that. Um, I don't recommend um, aluminum foil because sometimes they'll get too brown on the bottom when you're baking them. Got you. So we want to stick with, um, usually parchment is about the easiest thing to find. That and then as I put them on here, if for some reason they're like a little bit misshapen from having cut them, mm -hmm. you can just kind of squish them back into shape a little bit and make them a little round again. And then I have to try to space them out so that they've got a good inch or so since they're going to expand, you don't want them to be too close together. Yes. And then you're good to go. All right. I'm going to pop back in the oven. And I put them in for about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to grab these. I'm going to plate these up. So that is how they look when they're done. Nice. These did not have uh, the prosciutto in them, but they did have um, the pesto and the parmesan. So I'm going to set some of these on a plate. And I love this pretty plate. It's got, uh, I think it's reminiscent of that Gottlieb work too, with the kind of these fields of, you know, squares, yeah. um, different colors. So that's what you get when you're done. And so if, you have, if you have little people in your house, um, don't plan on having those around too long. They do not last. Uh, so that's good. My kids professed today that um, if they had only one order or appetizer for the rest of their life, they would be okay with this one. Oh. So I thought that was a pretty good endorsement. Um, <laughs> it's worth know, trying this. I don't know. <laughs> especially when you're dealing with little ones because their palates are so, um, we love our little ones, but they, they can, their palates can be basic. So you can't be too exotic with the food. Um, so right. to have something like this where it's a little fancier than chicken nuggets, right? Right. Uh, they, and these people love it. Uh, you have to like, sort of like pat yourself on the back and feel very accomplished as a parent, you know, you're right. in the new things, but still expanding that palate in the process. Um, I love, love, love this recipe. Uh, I feel like, I feel confident enough that I no longer have to get the ready-made ones from the grocery store that I can actually sure. make my own. And I'm almost certain that it'll probably be a lot healthier as I have more control over the salt and all of the other- Right, absolutely. But for sure. This is amazing. I love it. Um, I, I, I'm excited to, I wish I could be there with you and sample it. I know, me too. I know. It's way more fun to have these together, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have to have them apart, you know, especially this holiday, um, you know, you can certainly Zoom and eat these and they'll be, you know, they'll be very dramatic while you're consuming them. Somebody will be like, what are you eating? You know, <laughs> tell me all about this. And then you have a whole like, 
spiel for them about um, what they are and where the inspiration came from. And you can refer them to our uh, Newark Museum of Art, IG, Facebook, YouTube, and they can follow along with Chef Jennifer Armstrong, our food curator for the Newark Museum of Art, uh, and, and be able to copy and emulate what, they, what they're looking at you eat. So I, I like the plug. I see what you did there. I see how we circled mm -hmm. back. So that I, mm -hmm. I, like how you, I like how your brain works, Jennifer. I like how your brain works. <laughs> So again, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you all for the, all the viewers who are watching. We definitely are appreciative of you. Um, and we just want to encourage you that we have virtual program happening throughout the year. Um, this is not a one-stop shop. Uh, if you love Jennifer, there's going to be lots more of her moving into 2021. Um, and we have a multitude of other food-based programs like Happy Hour in MOA, where we get to explore the, uh, the connection between food and art and, of course, cocktails. Um, and with uh, that being said, a lot of our public programs programs also have the interplay of food, art, uh, music, and just culture. So there's a lot for everyone. Um, we, again, thank you, Jennifer, for being with us. And I guess this is signing off. So enjoy your holidays. Happy holidays. I'm going to wish you a happy, happy holiday and happy new year, Jen. I'll see you in the new year. And thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Happy holidays.